Chapel will be the 29th annual Wayne H. Christie Lecture. This year's guest speaker is Dr. Robert M. Franklin Jr., uh, the Professor of Moral Leadership at Emory University and Director of the Religion Department of the Ch Chautauqua Institute. Also this Sunday, New Wilmington Presbyterian Church is inviting all Westminster College students to a coffee break at 9.15 a.m., after which there will be a Bible study on 2 Peter in the Youth Lounge. And following worship, they are hosting a lunch and all students are invited to join them. Next Sunday, February 7th, will be our informal worship service, uh, which will be Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, so the time has been changed to be at 5.30 here in the chapel. Ash Wednesday is February 10th and will be observed with worship and distribution of ashes at two services uh, at 11.40 a.m. and 7 p.m. in the chapel. Uh, will you please join me in prayer? God of compassion, you have shown us in Christ that your love is never ending. Enable us to love you with all our hearts and to love one another as Christ, Christ has loved us. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Will you please stand?
Our first scripture reading is from Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The next scripture reading is from Psalm 23, verse 3. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of the righteousness for his name's sake. And another reading from Psalm 51, verses 10 through 12. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with a willing spirit. The next scripture reading is from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 30 through 31. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. My name's Melissa, and I'm lucky enough to be one of Kirsten's roommates. I met Kirsten on our very first day of freshman year at 7.40 in the morning in our biology lab. Upon seeing her kind spirit and friendly personality, I knew at that instant that she would be a friend for life. I'm so honored to know someone who thinks so highly of others and sees the good in people. She has taught those that know her that it's okay to stand up for yourself and what you believe in. She motivates everyone around her to be their best, and her dedication to her faith and absolute trust in God is truly inspiring. We should all look forward to the amazing ways that Kirsten is going to impact the lives of those she interacts with, especially those that have the honor of being in her presence every single day. She's one of the most driven, dedicated, beautiful, and warm-hearted people that I've ever met. God placed Kirsten on this earth to do something special, and I can't wait to see what outstanding and magnificent things that she accomplishes in her future. Um, hello everyone, my name is Katie. I'm also one of Kirsten's roommates. Um, first I want to say how honored I am to be a part of Kirsten's Senior Chapel and how happy I am that I get to help introduce her. Um, I thought I would talk about my experiences with Kirsten um, that I've had in the short time that I've known her. Um, Kirsten and I first met when she picked up Kappa Delta the fall of our junior year. Um, when I had the pleasure of now being one of her sisters. Although we were now sisters, it wasn't until we decided to room together um, that our tr tr story truly began. Uh, once we moved into our lovely townhouse, I knew immediately that we'd be best friends. Kirsten has given me so much love, friendship, and adventure in the small time that we've been friends, and for that I'm forever grateful. I honestly don't know how I could have survived this last year without her, and I look forward to the many crazy memories that we have ahead of us. So what better way to introduce Kirsten than by describing her, her um, by using like an acronym for um, the letters of her name. So K is for the kindness that beams from Kirsten's heart. I is for intelligent because she's one of the smartest people I know. E is for the endless amounts of laughs that she gives to those that spend time with her. R is for radiant because she radiates love and happiness in everything she does. S is for the endless support that she shows to others in times of challenges, whether it's an exciting opportunity or a time of struggle. T is for thoughtful because she is always willing to help others whenever they need it. I is for the inspiration she gives to everyone who has the privilege of getting to know her. And N is for nifty because, well, she's quirky and fun. So we wanted to end our introduction with a Bible verse. And even though Kirsten has heard this verse and used it in others' chapels, Katie and I both thought that there was nothing better to describe her than this one. It's Proverbs 31, 25 through 26. She walks with strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future. When she speaks, her words are wise, and she gives instructions with kindness. So without further ado, Ms. Kirsten Bucker. Hi everybody. Thank you, Katie and Melissa. That was beautiful. I love you guys. <laughs> um, and thanks to everybody for coming and thank you for everybody that participated in any way uh, in my chapel, whether you were uh, showing your musical talents or your 
reading talents, I guess. Thank you. Um, so as I was preparing for this chapel over winter break, I decided to ask my pastor from back home for some advice on what I should present on. And he told me, you know what, Kirsten, you're a pretty passionate person, so no matter what you present on, all you have to do is flail your arms about wildly and people will think you know what you're talking about. <laughs> so if I start yelling and flailing my arms about wildly, I probably have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> I've been so excited to give my message at chapel, but I was really struggling on what I should talk about. As I was scraping the snow off my car in the freezing cold and wishing I lived in the Bahamas, the idea came to me. My time at Westminster and the changes my relationship with God has gone through has sort of been like the transitions between the seasons, especially winter and spring. So let's all get one thing straight. I hate winter. I don't know why I decided to stay in Pennsylvania, even though I'm glad I did, but I hate it. Everything's dead and cold and icy, and even though all of the seasons are roughly the same duration, it seems like winter is always the longest. Sometimes we go through that period of life that can be described as winter, when your very soul seems frozen in place, not growing or going anywhere. Your relationship with God can be stale or flat, and you deeply long for that fresh breath of spring air from God. On the other hand, there are so many reasons why I long for spring. In that first warm day of spring, you realize everything is growing again, and everything is turning green. The birds are singing and the air just seems fresher and clearer. All the woes of winter are gone. We have all experienced those moments where God has set our heart free from the ice cold of winter. A spiritual springtime, if you will, where your spirit feels rejuvenated and your relationship with God is renewed. However, I have learned that you must go through the winter in order to appreciate the spring. In my journey at Westminster, I believe I have experienced many bouts of winter. Times when my relationship with God was put on the back burner as I dealt with other things. Times when life was fine and I felt like I didn't really need God. Then other times when I just felt lazy or apathetic about my relationship with God and our relationship just wasn't going anywhere. However, if I could sum up my time at Westminster in one word, as well as what I've learned about myself, God, and others, it's the word trust. I've learned that sometimes it's okay to not know what God's plan is. And I also learned that I can't do this alone, and I need to fully depend on God. Whenever I forgot this, he never failed to put me right back in my place and let me know who the real boss really is. Once I came to terms with this and learned to fully lean on him, I was always able to find the spring again. I have also experienced many situations of spiritual springtime, or a renewal of spirit, and I could list them all, but we'd be here for a long time and I don't have food to feed you all lunch. But I can name a few. Seekers Fellowship, a student-led organization uh, for Christians, has been a large part of my experience at Westminster, and I've learned so much about being a follower of Christ by being in this group. Being president, I've learned a lot about patience and trusting God to handle things, even when things got tough. I've also gained so many friendships that have helped me grow in my faith. In fact, the majority of the people you've seen up here helping with my chapel today are involved in Seekers in some way, and I don't know where I'd be without them. I have also made lasting relationships with all of my sisters and honorary brothers in my sorority. Kappa Delta has helped me become the confident woman that I am today. I have found many sisters that support me, many of which are in the pews, that always help me grow in my faith, offer me a shoulder to cry on, or to go on long midnight walks around campus. I have amazing roommates that are always there to give me a hug when I need it, and listen to me vent and support me in everything I do. I don't know where I'd be without them either. I have an amazing church family where I even adopted an amazing couple to be my second set of parents that are always there to support me and give me advice and allow me to steal their food. I have amazing professors that are always there if I need help. Even when asking a simple question such as what we have to read for class tomorrow turns into an hour-long conversation about the meaning of life. Or when a professor comes into the lab on a Sunday afternoon after receiving a distressed call from a student saying that she needs to do emergency surgery on her pet rat because she cut her neck open. <laughs> I don't think I could ever say how thankful I am to have such a supportive community here at Westminster that has helped me grow into the person that I am today. Another time that I've experienced a springtime that changed my life forever happened over this summer with my internship at Urban Impact. <clears throat> Urban Impact is a summer day camp on the north side of Pittsburgh, where I had the privilege to be a camp counselor for fifth grade girls and got the chance to talk to them about Jesus. This job was a two month long journey where I learned a lot. These girls really know how to be honest. They point out when you're being unfair to others or point out the flaws you uh, need to work on. Let's just say they're very observant. 
This job took every amount of strength and patience I had every day because I constantly poured myself into these girls, hoping something I was telling them would stick. In this job, I learned very quickly how to fully rely on God and also how to humble myself. If anything, these girls helped me more than I helped them. I learned that you can't pour from an empty cup. You must refill yourself before you can give to others. I found that energy and renewal of strength in God. I could tell very clearly the days where I didn't make time to talk to God first because it seemed as though everything fell apart on those days. In the end, this job changed my life. It helped me learn to accept others and to accept myself and to love others unconditionally. It also helped me find my passion for working with kids and confirm my desire to be a counselor for children someday. I learned so much over the course of my time at Westminster and I'm so grateful that my relationship with God has grown. However, for the longest time, I was focused on the wrong goal. My problem was that I was always looking for happiness. Sounds like an okay goal, right? However, when I wasn't happy, I thought something was wrong with me or that things weren't going in the direction God had planned. I was always just focused on reaching the next step, such as getting an A on that genetics test or getting into grad school, anything that would give me success and a sense of achievement. I thought that if I reached these goals, I would reach this ultimate goal of happiness. But what I realized is that there is a difference between having happiness and having joy. Happiness is only temporary. We are happy when we get something that we want, like a job promotion, an A on a test, or that cute guy in our class to talk to us. But joy is steadfast. Joy is having the inner peace of knowing that God is with us all the time. I finally realized this last semester that we shouldn't const constantly be searching for happiness or we will never be satisfied. Our main goal should be growing in our relationship with God and he can give us that joy and peace. If we pursue joy instead of happiness, we will find the spiritual springtime we seek. I have learned to have joy because life and joy despite life. So when life gets tough, we are still able to rejoice through joy in our relationship with God instead of always trying to find happiness or fulfillment from what the world tells us will make us happy and complete. Joy is constant no matter what season. As Gloria Gaither describes it, there is something in every season and every day to celebrate with thanksgiving. We don't always have to be in springtime mode all the time. In fact, spiritual springtime is not <clears throat> always found in times of happiness. Sometimes life is rough and it is difficult to find the springtime. But no matter what season, God is with us, showing that there is always something to celebrate or something to be joyful about. Westminster has led me through many seasons. Times where I was happy, such as the end of finals week, and times, <clears throat> excuse me, and times where I was sad, such as the beginning of finals week. But no matter what Westminster has thrown my day, thrown my way, I wouldn't change it for anything. Westminster has made me a stronger, wiser, more confident woman, and I couldn't have done it, <clears throat> any of it, without the friends that I've made, the family that I love, and the God whom I lean on. Westminster has taught me to be joyful and to trust God, and that you cannot appreciate the springtime unless you've experienced the winter. Through the long, long winter, I have found the springtime through the peace and reassurance that God can handle any season that our lives may lead us through. <clears throat>
Kirsten, thank you so much. Tani, thank you. Music folks, thank you. Thanks for great introductions and readings. Um, life is about seasons, I think, and you've hit on a lot of them. You know, when you're growing up, there's the season of high school and all the things that go with it, and now the season of college, and now to be the season of whatever the rest part of life brings for you. But in the season, there are highs and lows, and you hit on that. Um, in the season, there are successes and some failures. And when there are failures, we have to figure out what to do with them. Either we go backwards or we uh, fall forward. And uh, that's the title of a book that Max Licato wrote. Uh, and I, I love the, the book is good, but the title's great. Um, so, but the seasons of life are filled with uh, one constant. And that is that God is with you in that journey. God is beside you, God is around you, God is there to catch you when you fall, God is there to push you when you need a nudge, God is there to love you when you feel as if you're not lovable, uh, God is there to uh, take you through the highs and the lows and the journey even through the valley of the shadow of death. And that's the reminder, I think, that we need to get from today. Wherever you go, whatever happens to you, and whatever you find yourself in, God is there for you. So rejoice in that and celebrate that and share that good news as you go out today. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Well done.